historical rule for rendition. Uh, my own view is that it's acceptable only in really extraordinary cases. I mean, we look at the case involving Eichmann, right, after the end of World War II, who was seized uh, when he was in Argentina and brought back to be tried. That's an example of a rendition which I think can be justified. But I think these cases really are quite rare. Uh, rare. I mean, Michael is correct to point uh, to the fact that many governments are going to view snatching a person and carrying him away as a kidnapping. That's a criminal act. And a government should really refrain from that. We see already in Italy, we see 26 Americans, uh, CIA agents, diplomats, and military attaché uh, being tried for kidnapping and conspiracy there because of their implementation uh, of the Extraordinary Renditions Program. Um, and it's Meaning they took a shake off the streets of Milan. They kidnapped him. Um, and took him away. They flew him where? To Egypt? Well, yes. first, first he was taken where to was Mallorca, tortured. but ultimately yeah. he wound up in Egypt, in Egypt. That's correct, yeah. And they're being tried in absentia. They're, they're being tried, and it, I mean, it looks pretty clearly they'll be convicted. I mean, it's a, it's a major embarrassment for the United States. What about the issue of Adolf Eichmann uh, being taken off my, the streets my view of Argentina? Is, you know, it's, it, 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 I don't think you can justify rendition of any sort, whether it's Eichmann or anybody else, because it opens a door, a slippery slope to renditions all over the world, and it opens them not for Cuba. It opens them for big power countries or for countries that are protected by big power countries. If Cuba came in here and snatched Posada, that would be, I mean, probably the end of Cuba. Um, it wouldn't be the end of the United States, States if they went in and snatched uh, Vesco when he was alive in Cuba or Assad or Shakur. It would be outrageous, it would be illegal, but it wouldn't be the end. So the problem with opening a hole for rendition is you're once again opening in a hole, opening a hole that big countries will use or countries that are protected by big countries. We're going to go to break. And come back. Our guests are Michael Ratner, president of the Center for Constitutional Rights, and Scott Horton, New York attorney specializing in international law and human rights, writes a blog at Harper's uh, called No Comment. This is Democracy Now! Back in a minute. We'll get rid of the dictator, rebuild your country, make sure all your kids go to school. We'll clean up the cities, get the sewage plants running, institute parliamentary rule. We'll bring you autonomy, senators and judges, and a shiny new blue banner. We'll bring you pride and prosperity, food in your bellies, in every home a phone, fax, and scanner. After we torture our prisoners. We'll bring you decades of peace, spiritual release, free religious expression. You can say what you want in the papers you run. We'll never force a confession after we torture our prisoners. The oil will flow just where it should go, across the desert and into the sea. You'll thank your God and the CIA that finally you are free after we torture our prisoners. You'll all be safe with us to protect you and keep you out of harm's way. David Rovix, after we torture our prisoners. Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Coming up, we're going to talk to the University of Utah student who bought up land to stop it from being drilled on. Now the Interior Secretary is doing just that, stopping the drilling of land in Utah. We'll speak with Tim DeChristopher, the student. But first, we continue with Scott Horton, a legal affairs contributor to Harper's Magazine, does a blog there called no comment, and Michael Ratner, president of the Center for Constitutional Rights. I wanted to ask you about this British High Court ruling uh, on Wednesday that evidence of British resident Binya Mohammed's uh, uh, extraordinary rendition and torture of Guantanamo, Guantanamo had to remain secret because the Bush administration had threatened it would stop intelligence sharing with Britain if the evidence was disclosed. And interestingly, the court opinion adds that the position of the United States, quote, remains the same even after the making of the executive orders by President Obama on January 22, 2009. Scott Horton. Well, it appears that this message was communicated by John Bellinger, who is Condoleezza Rice's legal advisor. And, of course, he's not yet been replaced. His, his successor has not been named. We So we have a transition underway, but it's not complete. But I think it'll be a big question for the Obama administration how to deal with this. The correct response of the Obama administration should be to release all the information that's being sought about the mistreatment of Binyam Mohammed, so that that's in the public sector and, and these concerns 
concerns that the cooperating foreign intelligence service is disclosing information that's given aren't aren't uh, raised anymore. You know, we can, um, Scott and I have debated this and talked about it. We can parse these executive orders in many different ways. Uh, but the uh, Mohammed. Is, in fact, that the way they're written? That's right, they're supposed right. There, to. There should be many more blocks in those orders and many more clear statements, in my view, uh, that don't give you that wiggle room. Uh, but I think one thing that would go a long way toward saying, yes, we're really ending torture, yes, we're really ending not just renditions, but extraordinary renditions. I mean, not just extraordinary renditions, but renditions. Uh, but even Scott's narrower point on extraordinary renditions and not using torture, or even secret sites, is for this administration in the Mohammed case, in the center's case, Maha Arar, which was the extraordinary rendition to, uh, to Syria for torture. In the that was a Canadian citizen okay. taken off uh, right. J out of JFK airport. He was uh, going through JFK back home to Canada and sent to Syria. The Al-Masri case, where, where, he where he was uh, taken out of Germany eventually and, uh, and, and taken to Afghanistan. What should happen, and uh, all those cases that are pending, the Jeppensen case, which concerns the CIA air flights and a suit against them, uh, this administration has to now come forward and say, let's settle these cases. Uh, Maharar is completely innocent. The Canadians found him completely innocent. They settled with him. This administration took. Canadian government awarded him $10 million. And um, Prime Minister Har Harper, an ally of Bush, castigated the Bush administration for saying uh, he is still on the. Um, what, on the watch list to get on right, planes? still can't get into, this, this, into the United States. So, so let's, let's put some actions behind the words. Let's start settling these cases. Let's not say, uh, assert state secrets in all of these cases. Uh, let's not uh, say that the people who, were, who did this have, have immunity in the civil suits, whether it's Rumsfeld and others. Uh, we have a series of Guantanamo cases against Rumsfeld. Uh, immunity oughtn't be uh, raised in those cases. These cases, they ought to start doing that, and that'll put some teeth in, and that'll show people, you do this, you'll be sued, and we we at the United States will not accept How this. would you get Adolf Eichmann if you couldn't rip him out of Argentina to try him? The answer is you would try everything you can, from diplomatic uh, to every other way uh, that you could get him. But in the end, as I said, I think the, the horror of violating a so sovereign border, kidnapping someone, putting them in very bad physical conditions to get him out, whatever I, we think of Eichmann, which is obviously terrible, um, opens up a door, uh, whether it's, as Scott and I were discussing off break, Russians going after people who they don't like in Chechnya, whether it's in Vienna or some other country, um, it opens a door to illegality that I think is just too great, and no matter how nasty you think that person is. I want to go to another debate that you've been having. You just had a debate on this at New York University. Um, Scott, you wrote the cover story of Harper's called Just after Bush, and this involves uh, whether Bush administration should be tried, something clearly Obama is shying away from, saying, move forward, don't look back. Make your case, Scott Horton. Well, I think the, the parameters of this debate have changed quite a bit, uh, and I think uh, Eric Holder recognizes that. Uh, you know, since I wrote my article, we saw both Bush and Cheney go on television and acknowledge point blank their involvement in decisions to torture, and they put forward, both of them put forward a reliance on counsel defense. We talked to the lawyers, and the lawyers told us it was okay. And then we saw Susan J. Crawford, who was the senior most Bush administration official responsible for dealing with the Guantanamo. Uh, tribunals state that she, reviewing the case of al Qatani, concluded that he had, in fact, been tortured. And she laid out in an interview with Bob Woodward in some detail uh, her conclusion. Now, what's significant about that is that the entire program for, uh, for interrogating uh, al Qatani went to the National Security Council, was reviewed and was approved, including the approval of Cheney uh, and Bush. So they're both linked to a case that their own uh, principal agent considers to have been torture. This creates something that just can't be swept under the carpet in the criminal justice system. Uh, in fact, under the Convention Against Torture, Articles 4 and 5, the U.S. now has a clear obligation uh, to commence a criminal investigation into what happened and act on it. And the Obama administration hasn't yet done that. I think it's going to have to look reality in the face, and it's going to have to reach some hard decisions. Michael Ratner. Yeah, I think Scott's